So we have one industry and we have two businesses and those two businesses are vying for success, vying for profitability. Here's the problem. We only have one pot of money and that one pot of money consists of what we refer to as a rate. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you the two biggest problems that freight brokers and truckers have and I'm also gonna give you some pointers as to how you can navigate this area of contention. So come on inside, sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. Now let's get down into the business. I'm a person who's intentional about not having problems with the carriers that I work with, but sometimes in business, problems are inevitable. That just comes with the territory. That's the business we've chosen, so to speak. So when problems do happen, what I wanna do is to make sure that I handle those problems in the most professional way. The trucking and the freight broker business owner do have something in common. You see, we have some common ground as business owners. I am trying to make sure that my business is profitable, successful, long-term, and so is the carrier. And when we're going into a transaction and we both have our own interests at hand, there sometimes can be a confliction. And what is it that usually causes conflict? Causes these disagreements with freight brokers and truckers? I'll get into that right now. Money, money is always a problem, right? So let me clue you in as to how it works in the freight broker business. You see, as a freight broker, I'm gonna identify a shipper who's shipping goods throughout the United States. And then I'm going to go to them and provide them a service to move those loads from point A to point B. And I am going to try to get some of their lanes to move, to manage. Once I go to that shipper, they are going to say, okay, I want you to take a look at these lanes and give me prices on what you can get these lanes moved for. So I'll go in and I'll start dialing in on those numbers, researching, evaluating the lane, and when I finally get finished, I'll come back to the shipper and give them a price on what I can get a lane moved for. The shipper will take a look at that and they'll decide whether or not that works. Let's just say they said, okay, Brandon, you are authorized to move this load. I'll send you over a tender. And just in case you're not familiar with what a tender looks like, here it is. I've cut the top part of this off so it does not expose my customer's information. But if you look here, it's going to tell you what the picks are. It's going to give you delivery times. And then it's going to come down and tell you what special notes are. And in those special notes, it says driver counts product and verifies good condition of product. No SL and C. That means no shipper loading count. Trailer must be sealed, request seal from vendor. So when you have a seal on a trailer, that means that it will not be opened until it gets to the delivery facility. And then the person at the delivery facility will pop that seal, not the driver. So this is the tender. It gives you the information about the load and then it comes down and give you the rate give you the rate plus the fuel surcharge, the number of miles, and then it gives you a total rate. And anytime you have a load with this particular customer, they always require that you have the tender in order for you to get paid for this load. Once I receive that tender, now what I am going to do is to say, okay, I have X amount of dollars in this load. It's time now to go and sell this load to a carrier. So I'm gonna take that load to my carrier network first, and then if I don't sell it on my carrier network, I am going to take it to a load board. So now here's what happened with carriers. They are going to see this load posted out there, and if they're interested in moving that load, they have the same responsibilities that I do. They have to go in and sharpen the pen and find out what number will work for them in this lane. They're gonna figure out all of their costs that are involved to move the load from point A to point B, and then price the lane so that they can make a profit. The same thing that I have to do as it pertains to the shipper. Now, once they do that, they'll call me or maybe I've called them and we'll talk this lane over, talk it through, negotiate for the best price for the carrier, for the best price for me as a freight broker. Once we figure out and agree on price, then I send over a rate confirmation and we get the load movement process started. That's how it works. Now, here is what happens a lot of times. Carriers move loads from point A to point B. Once they get the load there and drop it off and I've paid them, sometimes they'll come back and say, not to me, but to other people maybe, that that load was a cheap load or I didn't make enough money on that load. Well, whose fault is that? 
Why didn't the carrier make enough money on that load? Because we're negotiating. Nobody is holding a gun to the carrier's head and saying he has to take the price that I am giving him. He has to figure out what is going to work from him in that lane. And in my opinion, as it currently stands, neither party has an advantage or disadvantage. Because when I go to the shipper, the shipper in most cases will not share with me how much they have in a load, how much they want to move the load for, or any history on that load. Most times what they're going to tell me is, hey, you go in and give us your price and we'll go from that point. That's understood. I have no problem giving my price because I know what I can move a load at and make profit. The trucker and the freight broker relationship is the same. But now you have some truckers that are calling for more regulation, more transparency in the industry because they're saying they should know how much money a freight broker has in a load. I think that that gives the trucker an unfair advantage. And the reason why I think that is because I don't get to go to the shipper and say, hey, shipper, you have to show me what your history is in this lane. You must tell me what you've been paying for these loads. If I can do that, then we're on a fair playing field. Personally, I don't think that regulation in most cases is a good thing because the more you put people in your business, the more they want to be in your business, the more they control what it is that you do. Another big issue that exists between freight brokers and truckers is the integrity issue. And I don't know about you, but for me, integrity is very important as a business person and of course as a man to be a person of integrity, to be honest, to do what you say you're gonna do, to say what you mean and mean what you say at all times. And for some reason, that sometimes gets bypassed in this industry or it's not reciprocated. When I give you my word and say that it's going to be a certain way, I expect in return that when you give me your word, it's what you say. And too often, we don't get that in this industry. Sometimes you have freight brokers that withhold information from carriers. This information will help them to make a better decision on whether they want to take a load or not. For example, sometimes freight brokers withhold information about facilities. They'll not tell you that there's detention problems at that facility. And then when you get there, you wait an extended amounts of time, five, six hours, seven hours to get downloaded. And this freight broker knew that and didn't tell you that. Or if you're a carrier, sometimes carriers have committed to the freight broker and said, we're going to move this load. You've sent out a rate confirmation. They sign the rate confirmation and send it back. They've sent you their packet. Everything is squared away, set and ready to go. And then at the last minute, the carrier calls and tells you, hey, I'm not going to be able to move that load. I'm going to have to cancel. Now, what usually happens in that case is that the carrier has gone out and found another load. That load may be paying more than the load that you have, and they're going to cancel your load and now go and move that other load. That is integrity issues. Those are the issues that causes problems for freight brokers and carriers. And if we clean those issues up, we communicate better, we can have a better relationship. In summary, there are problems within the trucking industry. There are problems that exist between truckers and freight brokers. But at the end of the day, I personally think that we can find solutions to the problems that we have. We can communicate better. We can understand each other a little bit better and get through these issues. I personally don't think that it's necessary to start bringing in regulators, people that are regulating the trucking industry more and more and more because to me, the more we bring in regulation, the more problems we introduce to the business. And that's exactly what we're trying to get beyond. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful Helpful. If you're interested in learning more about the freight broker business, I'll leave a free link in the description. It's my five video series titled, How the Load Movement Process Works. What is it gonna do? It's gonna give you a look into the freight broker business. Let you see how it works. That way you can look at it and make a decision before you decide to come into it. And then if you wanna know more about how the load board works, you wanna see a search for trucks, searching for carriers, moving loads via the load board, check out this free video right here. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.